Hey, John Morris here at johnmorrisonline.com. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get your first paid web design client. Now, getting your first paid web design client is the probably the most important action you can take for your coding career, whether you plan to be a freelance web designer or not. And it's that important because it immediately makes everything else so much more clear. You can see if you actually like coding, you get to figure out what your clients expect from you and you understand what to charge and why, plus a lot of other things that you may be wondering about right now. And most importantly, you gain confidence. You get to actually see firsthand that people will pay you money to code for them and that you can actually deliver on the projects that they want you to do. Now on the flip side, not getting your first client leaves all of that stuff unknown. Now you, you'll assume that you like coding, coding, but you don't know for sure. You continue to have no idea what clients really want and you have no idea what you can charge or why. And most importantly, you don't gain the confidence that you do when you get your first client, the confidence that's necessary to move forward in your career and that deep seated fear about whether or not clients will actually pay you and whether or not you can actually deliver will continue to linger. So in this video, I'm going to show you the exact steps you need to take in order to get your first paid web design clients. So stay tuned. So like I said, getting your first web design client is probably the most important thing that you could do for your coding career if you haven't yet. And I learned this the hard way. I spent four years learning to code, pretending that I still had more to learn before I could take on clients. But the truth was, the reason I wasn't taking on clients is because I was scared. What if nobody hires me? What if I can't deliver? What if I piss off a client and they tell everybody and my reputation is ruined? I had a hundred excuses for why I shouldn't take my first client. Meanwhile, my life was falling apart financially. I was working a job I couldn't stand and my wife was on the verge of leaving me. But getting my first client changed all of that. Now here's why. Confidence comes from competence and clarity comes from action. Let's take a basketball player. We all recognize that the only way to get better at basketball or any sport is to practice, to get out on the court and play. And it's the same thing with delivering on projects for clients, whether they be freelance clients or a boss at some big tech company. The only way that you can develop the confidence that you need to succeed is to get out there on the court and put in some practice. So here's how to get your first client. Step one, go to Elance or Odesk or whatever freelance site that you prefer and fill out your profile. Now you need to fill out your profile because anyone who seriously considers hiring you will take at least a quick look at it. Now we could spend volumes talking about how to fill out your profile, but for now the most important thing to do is actually fill it out and completely. You'd be surprised how many developers on these sites don't complete their profiles. Just having a complete profile can put you ahead of 90% of them. That and a professional looking picture. Now I know you probably have this urge like I did to express yourself on your profile and you can later on, but right now you're trying to get paid. So keep it professional. Tell your story and why you think you're a good hire and fill out every section. Do that and that'll be fine for now. Step two, search for projects you know you can deliver on. Now these sites have hundreds if not thousands of projects posted on them every single day and you could probably find anything you wanted on there. But you need to pick something that you can deliver on. Not something that sounds fun or something you're just interested in. Something that you know you can deliver to the client. The reason why is we're building confidence here and there's already enough fear coursing through your veins. So keep it simple and stick to something that you know you can do. Step three bid on the project. Now, be sure to read the entire proposal. A lot of these proposals contain phrases or words that they want you to repeat in your bid so they know that you actually read the proposal. Plus, you need to be clear on what they want anyway. So, read the entire proposal. Now, if you can see what other bidders are asking, then use that as a guide for what you should charge for your services. And if you can't see them, then just be sure to keep within whatever the proposed budget is. Picking something in the mid-range of their budget usually works unless it's some odd case or for some reason your instincts tell you to do it differently. 
Finally, when you make your bid, take some time to actually write out a well thought out response. Talk about their projects and demonstrate to them that you actually read the whole thing and understand what they want. Give any advice that you might be able to uh, give them and give them some results in advance to build trust with them and then explain why you're a good fit for this project. Now here's a good example of this. Whenever I bid on a project for someone who wants a membership site built with WordPress and Wishlist member, I always say, as a developer at Wishlist Products and the lead member for the Wishlist Member Certified Developers Program, that one phrase alone demonstrates that I'm a unique fit for their project. There's very few other people out there that are actually developers at the company of the software that the, uh, for the project that they're bidding on. And not only that, but I'm the lead instructor for the certified developers program. So it puts me in a very unique category and makes me a very unique fit for their project. Now, for you, you want to try and find some way or some reason why you're a unique match for this project. It almost make it feel like it's serendipity that, that you two came together. That's the approach that you want to take. Now, you can feel free to get creative with this, but you also want to make sure that you stay believable. From there, then just simply negotiate back and forth until you either get the client or you don't. And then you'll have learned a ton just from that process, even if you don't get the client. And if you do, then of course, deliver on that project for the client. Now, feel free if you have to, to take a really low fee. Uh, the point of this first project isn't to make a bunch of money. It's to have you actually get a first play client and earn some sort of money uh, and get the confidence that you need to know that you can do this, okay? So it's really about getting practice. Uh, so just make sure that you get some sort of project. Now, obviously over time, You'll zero in on the right price and learn how to stand firm on your price when negotiating with clients. So if you follow these three steps, then you should be able to land your first freelance client pretty quickly. But be careful because you just might get addicted to freelance work. All right, so here's how to take this and put this into action right now. I want you to head on over to Elance or Odesk or whatever freelance site you prefer and search for projects that you know that you can deliver on. Look through those projects and identify 10 that you think are a good fit and save those URLs on Notepad or some note keeping thing on your computer. Now, that's just one tiny step that you're taking, but it's a tiny step that can have a really dramatic effect on your career because it helps you develop that confidence. Then once you have your list of 10 projects that you feel that you are a good fit for you, then head back up to step one and start the process. And good luck and let me know how it goes in the comments. All right, thanks for watching this video. There's two more things that I'd like for you to do right now. First off, around here somewhere, you'll see a subscribe button. Go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can get access to more videos just like this one and help propel your web design career forward. The second thing I'd like for you to do is head on over to johnmorrisonline.com and on that homepage, you're gonna see an offer to get my seven strategies to turn your code into cash cheat sheet. This is a cheat sheet I've put together for you that is going to help you identify all of the different ways that you can monetize your coding skills. So head on over to johnmorrisonline.com and download that cheat sheet and help propel your career forward. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next week.